please welcome the former mayor for the city of Fort Worth, Betsy Price, and the EVP of Marketing and Strategy for Visit Fort Worth, Mitch Witten, and the SVP of Innovation at MMGY Next Factor, Greg Oates, in conversation with Skift Editor-in-Chief, Tom Lowry. Thank you and welcome. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to moderate this session today that will explore the relationships between government, private tourism businesses, and the local communities. Now, I know we've heard some of those topics today in earlier sessions, but what I hope we can achieve in the 25 minutes or so is a, is a deeper understanding of the dynamics of those relationships and offer some powerful examples of what is working, as well as give you with tactical solutions for how to make the case that tourism should matter more. Uh, and uh, with that, I, I, I want to welcome uh, and honored to have with us today Betsy Price, who is the former mayor of Fort Worth, who served in that role for 10 years, making her the, the longest serving mayor of, in the rich history of that city. Uh, welcome, Mayor Price. Uh, equally, equally honored to have um, Mitch Witten with us, the Executive Vice President of Marketing and Strategy for Visit Fort Worth. So welcome to you both. Um, Thank you. And I'll start, I'll start with you, Mayor Price. Um, can you talk a little bit, today's topic is, you know, why, tourism should have a bigger seat at the table. And I'll just ask you point blank, how does local tourism do that? I think it's critical that we do that. I mean, what there's nothing more fun than being able to sell your city and to showcase your city to other people. And that's what tourism is all about. And it's critically important because tourism conventions all bring outside dollars into your city. One of my council members said it's OPM, other people's money. It's not our local taxpayers, but the more important than that, you show in your city and you show off what you have. So often tourists come, they go back to their companies and they say, let's take a look at that for our next convention. Or if we're looking to move, let's look at Fort Worth. It's critically important, but it's all about engaging. It's not just public private partnerships. It's about engaging your citizens. One of the things that we did in the 10 years I was mayor, one of the hallmarks of our administration was to engage more citizens. We started a group called Steer Fort Worth, which was our young leaders group, got them involved, got them involved with showcasing the city, helping sell it to tourists, hosting events, got our faith-based cabinet involved. You've got to engage all your neighborhoods. People have to take ownership of their city. And there's no better way to do that than to get them excited about showcasing and selling their city to tourists and visitors. Now, the pandemic changed so much for the industry. How did you, how were you able to sustain that success through the last year, 15 months or so? Surprisingly, in the last 15 months, there was an awful lot going on. It started with in March of 20, when we first shut down, Visit Fort Worth had a great communications channel already open to visitors coming in, to local citizens who were tracking, what do I do? Where can I go? What entertainment is there? They had thousands of people on it. We had thousands of people on our social media. They had a campaign for the city called Y'all Means All. It was all about including everybody. And we took that, put a little spin on it and called it Y'all Stay Home and Y'all Work. And it was so well received and so popular that the entire county adopted it, 41 other cities. So it became easy for people to figure it out. We also worked closely with Visit Fort Worth to get PPE out to our small businesses, particularly the restaurants before they were completely shut down. And then when we started getting our CARES dollars in, we used Visit Fort Worth as part of the arm to help get the money in other people's hands, to get it to those restaurant owners who wanted to keep their staff working. We put more money of our CARES dollars out than any other major city in the hands of small businesses. It was a great partnership and it was great that we'd already built that platform. Great. Mitch, let's turn to you next. And clearly, it looks like you do have a seat at the table. <laughs> well, we are together, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, go a little deeper on the pandemic and how your strategies changed uh, during you know, the last year or so. Well, in a couple of years before COVID-19, really following Mayor Price's lead, we really decided to engage in what we call community-based tourism. And that's engaging locals to help us tell the story. We think that local passion for the city is really a magnet for tourism. So with those local channels open, 
uh, when COVID hit, we basically asked that fundamental question we should all be asking during a pandemic or not, which is what can we do of value to help the city within our within our lane of tourism and communication? And uh, Mayor Price and her team said, we need to get the word out. We never thought we'd have a tourism bureau say, y'all stay home. But we, we did that and we quickly, really within about 48 hours of shutting down, uh, converted our website into a machine to promote local restaurants. From our community, uh, we knew people weren't traveling and staying in hotels as much, but one out of, out of every three restaurant workers is supported by uh, other people's money and people who don't live here. So within 48 hours, we converted our website uh, to promoting takeout, who was still open, and saw a tenfold increase in web traffic uh, as locals turned to us for that information. So about 40,000 visits per day for, for the first phase of the pandemic and so became really a kind of local business. I mean, that's incredible engagement. So how do you maintain that going forward? I mean, what resources uh, can DMOs dedicate to engaging with locals like that? I think one of the big changes is it, I think community engagement used to be just something the CEO did and everybody else was doing the advertising, the media relations, the selling the conventions. And I think you have to, you know, the real big question is it's, it sounds easy, but who is going to do that? Who on your team is going to, what resources are you going to devote in time to going out and meeting with these different neighborhoods? Uh, you know, Mayor Price, you really set, set the pace in, in terms of we had to engage not just our tourism districts, but how do we start developing tourism and bringing opportunity to areas that might have some great restaurants, might have some opportunity, but, but really weren't on our tourism map. So that's time. That's time to meet right. with people, understand what their story is, and really incorporate that into your message. And I think you, just, you absolutely I'm have sorry. to have, Go you have to have your visit Fort Worth, your DMO at the table. When we start looking at how we're going to spend CARES dollars and now the American Recovery Act dollars, we had both Mitch and Bob Jameson, our CEO at the table, to help us decide how do we continue the when we got here. What are other ways to stay aligned with the goals of the community? Um, you know, just maybe some examples. Well, one for us was uh, the city's economic development plan clearly said in our, in our private sector said, we want young creative talent in Fort Worth and we want to, we want to draw more of that. Many people know our region as DFW, um, which, you know, we, there's, there's, there are many cities in our area, uh, including Dallas, but we want to stand out as a place with, for talent attraction. One of the best ways we've, uh, one of the leading ways we've, we've started a music initiative in a music office. We were the first music friendly city certified by the governor's music office, governor of Texas. And uh, to, because music cuts across genres, uh, socioeconomic lines, neighborhoods, and uh, we started uh, both bringing music here and exporting our music, giving, giving grants so that our, our musicians could go tour around Texas into some of our big feeder markets. The bottom line is that starts to change opinions about Fort Worth. And we started to see headlines and feedback from other communities saying, wow, Fort Worth really does have a young, creative community spirit we didn't know about. Terrific. Let's, let's turn to our third guest, who is actually a former colleague of mine from Skift, Greg Oates who is now um, you know, a Senior Vice President of Innovation at MMGY Next Factor. Just last week, you were at a Destinations International Conference in Baltimore. And this is, the, I guess, the first live event uh, on that scale in 17 months. And I'm just wondering kind of what you were hearing from DMOs at that. Give us kind of a, a sense of your observations from being on the ground at that event. Right. So just real briefly, Destinations International is the International Trade Association representing the interests of tourism organizations like Visit Fort Worth. Uh, we had over 850 people show up in person. Uh, the, the big, there was really three big themes uh, over the course of the week. Diversity, and Mayor Price mentioned, uh, uh, y'all means all. Uh, diversity was such a uh, upfront and key piece of almost every conversation. And not just looking at it in terms of race and gender, but the idea that diversity is the wellspring of creativity and innovation. And the more different audiences that you can bring together, the more that that benefits uh, the entire both supply and demand side of, of the visitor economy. The second one was sustainability and showing real intention there now to align strategies around some of the sustainable development goals or looking at metrics and looking at partners who destinations can work with um, to be more uh, aware and effective in mitigating some of the negative impacts of 
the visitor economy. And then the third one is about what we're talking about a lot today, and that's community and destination alignment and aligning the public, private, and civic sectors to build stronger communities, which in the, at the end of the day make communities more um, interesting for visitors to um, come see and explore and navigate. So that's sort of a rough overview of what we were all talking about. Terrific. And just so our audience knows, MMGY, X Factor, uh, Fort Worth is a client of theirs, just uh, on the disclosure front. So Greg has had a relationship with uh, the two folks you see here today. Uh, you just released a 2021 future study. Greg, can you talk a little bit about some of the highlights and what's relevant for the topics that we're talking about here today? Right. So our company every two years produces the Destination Next Future Study for Destinations International to really look at the major trends uh, in terms of the overall visitor economy and specific strategies for destination organizations based on those. So we every two years when we do this, we introduce new trends and new strategies, and we ask destination leaders around the world to rank those in terms of importance and relevance for their organizations. Uh, this year, we had over 706 participants in the survey from 50 plus countries. And on the trend side, uh, very clearly, we saw that number one, uh, was greater industry, community, and government alignment is driving destination competitiveness and brands. So these three that we're highlighting here were all new this year, and they are two of them were new. And then the second one, travelers are seeking more personal enrichment and well-being. This speaks to transformational travel, uh, the idea of personal fulfillment, and traveling to sort of achieve achieve that best version of yourself. These themes jumped high from 16 to 6. And then this third one is cleanliness and hygiene, which clearly came out of the pandemic. And we don't expect that to be as high. All right. Okay. With that, I'm going to turn it to, to Mayor Price and Mitch. Um, can you give us, I mean, the, the sort of power of examples, you've got so many. Could you just highlight a few for us? Uh, and then I understand there's a video that you would like to share with us today. But let's talk about those examples first. Well, one of the big successes that we had that no one thought we would pull off was during the pandemic, we got an opportunity to host the National Finals Rodeo and with Arlington. Arlington hosted it at the Cowboy Stadium and we were the central host here and we had activities all over the city and people kept saying, you know, this is December of 20, in the peak of the pandemic. How are you going to do that? And we felt like we could do it safely and we did. And We had thousands of visitors here. And it just virtually saved so many of our small restaurants. It really made, brought their staff back to the table. It was a huge success and it made our Visit Fort Worth and our city team feel like that partnership together, because we couldn't have done it without Visit Fort Worth at the table with us in Arlington too. It really was an example of a community pulling together and saying, y'all come see us, but let's do it safely. Right. Mitch, can you add on to that as well? Yeah, I would say, too, that really pulling the community together to do things like that. A couple of years before that, um, Mayor Price led a delegation to South by Southwest, and we did an activation bringing uh, innovation from the private sector together with our music initiative, our film initiative. Uh, Mayor Price helped to start a film commission to bring feature films here and really to show that when you pull together, it tells a strong story. Um, we did have a video I think we can share, Tom. This yeah, is sure. Keep that up for us. So this is our, our tour, latest tourism commercial, and it really started because we went to the community and said, would you be a part of telling the story? And bottom line is two musicians raised their hand. One said, uh, one who has kind of a, a, a more Americana flavor said, I'd love to be a part. And another guy raised his hand and said, are you doing anything with hip hop? We said, we didn't even know we had a hip hop scene. <laughs> and Lou Charles has become a friend and wrote this song that we decided to use as the soundtrack for, um, for our promotional video this year. Great. And Let's look now, it's just helped us find pockets in the community of talent that we didn't know that were there. But you've got to reach out or you're going to miss something that's critical to draw people into your city. Back to the city where I live in. There ain't many things I've been missing as long as my people with me. Yeah. Very fun, very fun. So before we, before we turn to another topic, Mitch, you talked earlier, we talked before uh, 
today. Um, you talked a little bit about perceptions and and Cowtown, and so how do you maintain the history and the legacy of Fort Worth while trying to move it forward? Um, you know, talk a little bit about that strategy, where you know you don't want to you don't want to sort of forego the history of this great city, but uh, you also just you know this fun video we just saw. Well, I think every tourism organization in many cities is really in the in the middle of the uh, in the, of the storm between the past and the future, and we've got and a lot of you know you go to another city often for what you know it for, but you're also trying to you know cities are always changing. You're you're always thinking, especially on the meeting side that we're trying to grow. You want to show how they're uh, working on uh, uh, air mobility here and on the future of agribusiness and food. So there's always a tension between the past and the future. And I think what's basically important for us is is really listening. And I think what the change is, is the, the DMO is no longer the, um, the decider of the story. I think we're the filter for the community. And we uh, just, again, it takes time to spend to go, to go out to people and say, what is the story? Tell us what's happening. Tell us where, you know, I didn't know we had fashion influencers in Fort Worth and they've become a big part of uh, helping us get the word out. And so you just have to, you just have to have your ear to the ground and always asking, um, what else can we add to the story? And it, it depends on who you're talking to. Am I talking to a meeting planner? Am I talking to a young, a young person who's looking for a different travel experience? What's the, what do they value? So you yeah. mentioned, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mayor Price, I'm sorry. Yeah. Remember the soul of your city, and the soul of the city in Fort Worth is, is always going to be our Western heritage. But notice in that video, we went from hip hop to the Longhorns on the street. So you know they're all blended together, and that's what keeps Fort Worth pretty unique. We've been able to pull those together and keep keep all of us at the table. So clearly, a, a really important sector of your community is your corporate citizens, and Fort Worth is home to American Airlines, Bell Textron, and some Perot companies. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, sort of big meetings and attracting talent? You know, earlier sessions today, we heard from Sydney and Toronto. We're trying to win back citywide events and big meetings. Mitch, what's your approach on this? Well, I think there's a lot of innovation going on. And I think that the uh, as we look to expand our convention center in the next seven years, the, uh, we need to be re we're reaching out to those industries and saying, tell us about the innovation. Tell us what we can go after these these meetings and really because Fort Worth located, uh, you know, served by Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, one of the leading airports in the world, one of the, we're at the cross section of two of the busiest interstates in the country, um, really has an opportunity to convene people and telling the community that we want to be the, the engine that convenes people on their important topics. And uh, Mayor Price, that's really fits the goals of, yeah. of the private sector as you've told us. Yeah, the private right. sector wants you to help them sell this. They like bringing their customers in. They want a strong, vibrant area. But more than that, it's economic development for them because they can't hire the creative minds that they need if they think they're coming to an older, stuffy city that isn't growing. They want a city that's got a strong, creative atmosphere, good music scene, great film scene. And we've been able to do that. We just recently released 12 Mighty Orphans. It was filmed here, one of our first big films that was here. Brought a lot of business in, but our corporate partners helped underwrite that movie. So what, I mean, we've written a lot at Skift about remote work and the changing dynamics of the workplace. I mean, what can Fort Worth do to attract the talent to come and live in Fort Worth as an alternative to, let's say, Chicago or New York City or L.A.? Well, one of the good things coming out of the pandemic, for us at least, is people really like having more space. Really, you're, the studies are showing they want to get away from being, as you said, shoulder to shoulder in a cubicle. They want more space. They want more yard space. So Greg, let me let me bring you in on this in terms of, um, you know, what you're advising clients in terms of remote work opportunities right now. Right. One is just promoting the attributes of the destination and why it's attractive for remote workers, and that can really. Uh, vacillate whether you're a Lake Placid or somewhere like Chattanooga. Um, Barbados has done some great work in that area. So has Miami. Uh, one of the things for, I think, Fort Worth that makes it attractive is uh, affordability is one. Also, some of the communities in Fort Worth now are, I would put them up against any other community in terms of dynamic creative energy uh, across the country. You know, we've seen in your past where Portland, um, 
Austin, Brooklyn going way back. You know, it was that creative dynamic energy that made them attractive places to come and visit and live. And right now you look at a community like near Southside in Fort Worth and the just the 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 coming together of so many different creative types of music and film and technology uh, in areas that's that's affordable. Uh, it's a place that I want to visit. It's a place that if I was looking to work remotely. So I think promoting that creative dynamic energy and the affordability piece in large metros um, is key. And you did it. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mayor Price. Number three was well-being. City has focused on our well-being with our Blue Zones and Healthy Community Initiative and added 80-something miles of bike trails and thousands of acres of new parks. And that's really attractive for families. So is it a is it a chicken and egg issue? Is it the sort of innovative communities that come and then tourism will come, or is it that that the sort of vibrant tourism scene will attract sort of the workers? I think it's a little bit of both. Like you got you got to do both. You got to attract them, but you got to build what brings them here, and and they're pretty much simultaneous. And Tom, I think that um, I think that it really takes an attitude of you know we don't always get it right. It, it we. Uh, we learn every day, and uh, but it takes. Uh, we've had to be very open and say, you know, more often than not, say yes. Let's talk together. Let's figure out why you're part of the story. I mean, we have we have a cattle drive twice a day that that is uh, attracts visitors from around the world. We have Michelangelo's first painting in, in the Kimball Art Museum, but we also have Leon Bridges, who started singing down the street and was washing dishes a couple of years ago, wow. and today has produced his third album. So we just. Their cities are dynamic. They're not a singular brand. And, uh, and as Mayor Price said, it's really holding that past and future together and, uh, and trying, to, trying to work it every day so that you, you know, you're telling the right story to the right person. As we sort of have a, a couple of minutes left, I'd like to, to get from you your best advice for DMOs coming out of the pandemic that can have community-driven strategies so, Greg, let's let's just start with you, and and uh, and then we can turn to the mayor and Mitch on this. Sure. So, I think DMOs are becoming much more aware of what are the key priority sectors for the city, and this really speaks to the meeting side. So, trying to attract um, meetings and events in the priority sectors for the destination to support the growth of those uh, advanced and creative industries, and then. In line with that, what are the priorities for the economic development organizations, the downtown business improvement district, uh, nonprofits, foundations, universities, uh, community groups, and being much more aware of those priorities and aligning strategy um, with that. Uh, also, just going back to the, the future study that we talked about, we looked at the trends before, looking here at the strategies. What was really surprising, and this ranked number four out of 180 strategies that we put forth was to build the destination brand around the community's goals, values, and creative energy. And that's exactly what we were talking about with some of the uh, initiatives in Fort Worth. And the idea that, you know, we've been talking about experiences for 15 plus years now. So commoditized everywhere. Um, great here and all that, but it's that that energy is promoted to find what a destination stands for and, and why people should consider it. The For Worse Stories was a perfect example of that. The whole Helsinki freedom marketing, we see it over and over now, how uh, destinations are, are going in that direction. Mayor Price, you were in city service for a decade. Um, you know, as you look to the future, and <clears throat> based on your sort of experiences and challenges and successes, what kind of advice would you give to a DMO that maybe has not had the same kind of track record that you have? I think they got to realize that the city government is a critical partner with them and that the citizens are what's really going to drive that. You're never going to have successful tourism if you don't bring your neighborhoods in and your citizens groups and your corporate partners. Your DMO has got to sit down and lay out a plan that everybody can buy into or it's never going to succeed. And that means opening that door and including everybody, even sometimes those who you think are the naysayers come to the table with some of the very best advice. Right. And Mitch, just let's conclude with you. I mean, you're you're at the table. So let's let's hear what kind of uh, advice you would impart to to DMOs. 
Well, it's no surprise. Many of us know it's a reset coming out of COVID. Uh, many of my colleagues across the country laid off 20 to 45, 50% of their of their staff. And so as we rebuild, rebuild strategically. And I think, you know, we're, we ask ourselves every day, what, what did we do in the past that was not as critical and how can we help the community move forward? Do we, maybe we don't do a visitor center like we did before. Maybe that needs to be into a, uh, that needs to go into a salesperson who specializes in, in a med in medical innovation, because you're going to sell meetings based on that. If that's one of your community goals, maybe you need to have someone who's dedicated to working with neighborhoods who are have some emerging shops and restaurants who want to be on the tourism map who, who are not there right now. So it's really thinking, I, I'd like to think that we have such an opportunity coming out of COVID-19 to rebuild in a different way, or at least at least in a more strategic way and, and, and questioning what we did in the past. I want to thank all three of you for such a vibrant conversation today. There's so much here to think about and to sort of take action on. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for having us. Come see us, y'all. <laughs> thank you, Tom.